Mike, I, I know uh, this decision to end the Crossroads Classic, you know, was made before you got here. Um, but but what are your thoughts going forward on on playing games in Indianapolis? I know as a player, you got to every year and such. And, and how important is that going forward to you to at least try to get the, to play there at least at least once a year or close? Well, it's very important. Um, I mean, that's home for me, man. That's where I grew up. Give my family an opportunity and friends to come out and see us play. Not that they don't come down the road 37 to see us here in Bloomington, but um, for me, it's, it's, it's sentimental. You know, I mean, I'm, I love Indianapolis and, and everything that it has to offer. Uh, so it would, it would be nice if we can get a game there here in the future. Um, and, you know, I don't know how that's going to pan out, but, I mean, we're working on some things, so we'll just have to wait it out and see where we go after we finish this weekend. Jeff. Hey, Coach. How we doing? Good. How are you? Good. Hey, um, I did a couple of radio interviews this week, and the number one question I kept getting asked is, where is Christian Lander in the rotation? Is he on the verge of more playing time? So I figured the best thing, I just toss it to you. Where is he, and is he on the verge of more playing time, or kind of where's that dynamic at? I would never discuss with any fan or media playing time. Just Christian Lander is wearing an IU uniform, and if I see fit – to put him in the game, and I just hope that he's ready to play whatever minutes he gets. And I and he's 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 done that for me, you know. And you know, I don't. That's a hard question to answer because again, you know, I'm as a coach, I'm going to do I, what I think is right for the team. That's not to say playing him is is wrong. He has played some, maybe not as much as he wants to play. Um, and that's good, too, because I want 17 guys that want to play. You know, that's that's what playing basketball is all about. I'd be disappointed if you sit over and didn't give it a damn about playing. So, hey, Christian's just got to keep working, which he's doing that, uh, doing all the necessary things on and off the floor, and just got to wait and see where it leads us. Alex. Hey, Coach, hope you're doing well. I'm curious, when you look at Notre Dame on film, what concerns you the most about them? And uh, just in terms of the guard play, you know, they, they obviously have a lot of guys that can make plays in the perimeter. How important is it going to be for, for you uh, to, to match that on Saturday? Well, first of all, they well coached. You know, he's done a hell of a job over the years there at Notre Dame. And, you know, they got a veteran ball club that's been together a while. So their system is in place. They know each other really well. Uh, so we got to combat that as well. Uh, and yeah, their perimeter play is what drives them. And so, you know, I, I think when I watch film on them, they, they very organized. I like the way they play on both ends of the floor. Uh, and we got to commit ourselves as a unit for 40 minutes, man, to, to come out of, come out of banker's life with the win. I mean, it's not going to be a, game that we go in and, and think it's going to be easy. You know, we got to compete for 40 minutes and see what happens. Mike Schumann. Yeah. Hey coach, I'm, I'm curious what you think about what you're getting out of your transition offense right now. Are you guys playing as fast as you want to play? And if not, what, what do you want to see more of in that regard? Well, again, I, you know, when you talk about tra everybody wants to run in basketball, I don't care what level it is. You know, I hear that all the time, man, we need to run more, run more, run more. Well, you got to get stops, you know, you got to create you, your chances of being able to get out and transition and run. Um, yeah. You can dribble the ball up quick when it's slow time and, and milk possessions or, or, or take quick early shots and play fast that way. But listen, we're, we're, we're scoring almost 80 points a game and we're giving up, a, you know, we're giving up 62, 63 points a game. So my thing is I look at the plus minuses. That's a pretty good plus. Um, you know, yeah, I like to get easier buckets, but the only way you get those is you got to get stops and create turnovers and where you can get out and do things early. Um, and that might speed the process up, but 
I don't buy into the, you know, when we got to play quicker and this and that, you know, I just want to be more sufficient. That's what's important to me. Tyler. Hey, coach. I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, this is kind of a coaching philosophy question, but you've talked a lot about instilling confidence in your players. H how do you balance instilling confidence while also like being hard on them when, when it's needed? Hey, coaching is coaching. I've, you know, I, I tell these guys all the time, it's never going to ever be personal with me. You know, sometimes, you know, when I'm loud and boisterous, it's the message that you probably need to ring in on. Not because I'm screaming or, you know, listen to the message, you know. And, you know, that's kind of how I was coached, you know, and I'm not saying it works all the time, but you know, I know when the pack guys and when, when the push guys, I've learned that as a coach over the years. Uh, but I think all players want to be coach guys. I do. And it's just finding the right buttons to push. And, you know, there are days I'm sure they walk off the court saying that this guy's crazy as hell. But then there are days that they say, hey, man, Coach really is a good dude and he loves me and he, he want nothing but the best for me. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's nothing, nothing more than that. I'd be foolish, you know, to think anything differently. Man, I need these guys to win. I need them to play hard and do the things that, I think they can do to put us in a position to win. So I don't want to screw that up. So, but I'm still going to coach. That's what I do. That's what I like to do. So it's, Alec, a, it's, it's a balancing Alec. act. Put it that way. <laughs> Alec. Uh, yeah. Coach, you talked about Notre Dame being obviously a lot more perimeter oriented, uh, especially with their big guys as well. How have your bigs, uh, especially trace and race come along, with defending out on the perimeter and kind of where do they still have to go to kind of reach their full potential? Well, I think they've done a pretty good job in that regard. Um, you know, we don't switch a whole lot. And then when we do switch, you know, they, I mean, there's sometimes they get caught in a bad way and they have to switch out on a smaller guy. That's just basketball guys. You can't play a 40 minute game and that not happen. It can happen in transition where, you know, you didn't get back and you might have to, play somebody that's smaller than what you custom the plan. And that's the whole beauty. I think about our ball club. When I took over, those are things that I try to teach. Hey, it ain't going to be perfect every time down the floor. So do you just say, well, I'll take this possession off because I'm not guarding my man and I'll make up the next possession. It doesn't work like that. You're going to get caught in bad situations and, and you're going to have to just man up and play. And I think for the most part, they've done a pretty good job in that area. I have no complaints there. Dustin. Hey, Mike, I uh, just wanted to ask a little bit more about how the, uh, the, the, the series with Kansas came together. I mean, I think you said from the beginning, this is the sort of game that you wanted to play, the type of program you wanted to play. Uh, when did you guys start putting this together? What made, it, what made it a good fit in your mind? And uh, I guess just, just tell me more about how this came to be. Well, look at both programs. Kansas has got great tradition, man. Got a great coach and build down there. And um, I just think fans want to see the games like that. It used to be that way here. You know what I mean? Somehow, you know, if I can get the Kentucky series back, I would love to get that back with Cal uh, because I just think that's what fans want to see. Um, you know, maybe we get a game with UCLA or, you know, somebody out West. I mean, I think as you build your program, you got to put teams in play just to test your team, man, just to see what your, your program is about. You know, that's important. I think moving forward, coach always did it, you know, and you know, it didn't hurt after you did that two or three times, you have to run into the tough big 10. So, I mean, it all goes hand in hand, but I think you got to challenge your, your, your team, as you move forward, as we build in this, we got to challenge ourselves with which big time programs and Kansas is sits right at the top. Kevin. Yeah, coach, you've stressed the importance of the point guard position, you know, since the beginning of the season, how do you feel like, what do you feel like you're getting out of it at this point? And maybe how could you use this time in December before big 10 play to kind of even maybe develop a little more before you kind of get into the teeth of the conference schedule? 
Well, I still think it's work in pro progress with all our, our point guards. Again, you know, it's a tough position, man. And I try to, I'm, I'm demanding when it comes to that, you know, I mean, there's certain things that they got to be able to do to get us over the hump. And, and we're still in the learning stages, you know, me being the head coach and, and our point guards being point guard players for our ball club. Um, we still got a ways to go in that regard. And I'm going to keep pushing X and Rob and Christian to, to be better, man. That's because as they get better, we'll benefit from it as a ball club. Zach. Mike, I, I sort of had a question um, going into kind of a neutral site game, but maybe more broadly, especially in college where, you know, you're probably dealing with arenas of, of different sizes, capacities. You're obviously dealing with different basketballs, like physically the basketball can be different from one place to the next. Do you do anything different with, a, for example, a neutral site game in terms of the way you prepare your players, the way you build out a scouting report, anything like that, talking to guys, whether it's about sight lines, about the court, about anything that might be different from what you do at home? Not really. I mean, you know, we – you know, we just try to put them in the best position possible to win. Um, you know, we've had the Syracuse and Wisconsin game. The only other game we had was Belmont, uh, you know, where we went to Louisville and played there. Um, you know, until you learn how to win and know what it's like, you know, you know, that Wisconsin game would have been a beautiful win for our ball club because it would have put us in a different light just as a team in general, I think. Um, they really don't know what it's like to win yet on the road. Um, and although Belmont was a pretty good test because they're a pretty good team. Um, I just got to get them over that hump. You know, I, you know, to answer your question, we're not doing a whole lot, you know, you know, times are different. You know, you eat differently, uh, when you're out on the road. Um, um, but you know, our preparation is still the same in terms of how we go about preparing our guys uh, to play. And, you know, I always told our guys, and I mean, even in the pros, when you go out on the road, you got to have a totally different mentality because you don't have your fan base uh, that's there like a six man that's rooting you on. So you, your whole makeup has got to be totally different. And once the game starts, you know, you can't turn it over. Um, you got to get shots and then you got to get stops and rebound the ball. I mean, that all goes hand in hand every time you play, but on the road, you got to be a little bit more deliberate about how you play. You can't take chances. And, uh, you know, I thought, you know, in the Syracuse game, you know, we got down so early that uh, that scared the hell out of me because I didn't really know how we would respond because we hadn't been in that position. And, and then we did respond. And then in the Wisconsin game, losing the big lead, you know, I think our guys know that they can compete on the road, but we got to finish, finish it. You know, that's the name of the game. You got to finish to get that feel of what it's like to win on the road. Tom and then Jeff for the last question. Mike, I know you uh, never had to worry about the basketball stuff from the NBA to college, but this is the, the wrap up of finals week in that. How have you uh, adjusted to sort of a dealing with uh, the academic loads of your players and, and, and the, the responsibilities of that? And how much, how much do you talk academics with them? All the time. You know, I talk to the academic counselor uh, all the time. Uh, you know, basketball is basketball. I get it, you know. But academics, education is first. It's, it's more important than just basketball. Uh, you know, I think we put so much emphasis on sports in general, and I get it. But got to get an education, man, around me, you know, because that's going to take you, I think, a lot further than this sport. So, uh, you know, we, we give them time to do what they need to do, and I work around their schedule. Uh, for practice time, because that's important. Last question, Jeff. Hey, Coach, just wanted to follow up on Jordan Geronimo. Um, what do you like that he's done, and sort of what would you say maybe are the next steps for him to continue to pr progress this season? 
just continue to work. I mean, he's gotten better. Um, I think the, the big thing is, you know, when he's challenged defensively, uh, may it be, a, you know, in traffic defensively with the basketball in his hands, you know, he's got to get more comfortable in that area because he, he shrinks. And uh, uh, those are things that will come with, with more time, more practice, where he's more comfortable in doing things. Because I'm not – I won't ever take the ball out of his hands and say you can't do that. My job is to get you to do it. And he has made major strides from the time we started some months ago together, and uh, he's getting better. And he's a, you know, he's a good kid. He works, man. He comes to the gym. He's a proud kid, and he puts his time in. And, um, so he's just got to keep working, I guess, to answer your question. I mean – my job is to push him to get better. All right, guys. Thank you. We'll see you Saturday.